Hey, kia ora mātātou, te whānau. Hey, well, welcome back to Word on Monday for today. This is Re White. Um, yeah, we're kind of in winter time up here in Northland and a bit of rain. Um, but we just got this morning sun that's coming through. So I've got this nice little... I'm shaded by a beautiful tree that's now got its leaves on the ground. Um, but there's a bit of sun in there, I don't know what to do about it. Probably could turn around, but it's actually quite nice and warm. <clears throat> well, um, today we are looking at James and uh, carrying on our corridor. We're now in James chapter 2, verses 14 through to 26. And yesterday I talked about this particular passage um, under the overarching theme of um, a faith gauge that... Uh, faith in action is the main point of our particular passage today. And it's kind of summed up in two verses, uh, verses 22 and 26. And yeah, so you want to join us? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Faith in action um, in our lives. 22. You see that his faith and actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Let's talk about Abraham, if you look at the verse beforehand. And then further on, down in 26. As the body without a spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Um... Uh, you recall, uh, if you've been following us for a little while now, we introduced James as possibly one of the earlier uh, epistles that was written um, that we now, in the sense of what we have now, is the, the New Testament. And it followed after uh, the persecution of the Christians in the city of Jerusalem. And so they were dispersed, and James is writing to those uh, disciples, those followers of Jesus that are, are in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outer ends of the earth. Through persecution, the church has gone out. Yeah, but there's some things that James is trying to encourage the folk around trials and persecution, uh, about counting a joy and long suffering, um, this idea of um, that our our emotions and our thoughts and our tongue are all to be kept in check. Um, back in chapter 1, um, um, 19 onwards, it talks a, a lot around this idea of being slow to speak and quick to listen, uh, or slow to anger. In other words, uh, we're not controlled by our emotions, unlike the world that we're in at the moment, depending on what emotional button is pressed. Um, you exert it or display it or uh, show it online. Um, James here is saying that we, part of our faith movement, part of our development is we keep our emotions in check, particularly when it comes, it comes out in relationship to anger. Uh, it's not to suppress anger, but rather it's to, um, you know, be slow to speak, slow to anger. Because uh, once you actually do something out of anger, it's not actually following what Christ wants us to do. And so here, he kind of, uh, there's two segments now in chapter 2, which we talked about last week and this week, of this idea of our faith um, is to be so, so supported by our deeds. Faith in action. Now, this is not the, this is not the idea where... Um, it's our deeds or our action that saves us, which used to be some of the, well, which can be a bit of a, um, a problem. And particularly when we're, we're looking at <clears throat> the wider discourse that we find uh, in the New Testament around faith. And the obvious marker here is Paul's discussion around we're justified by faith, or either Romans or in Ephesians. Um, and that came out of a context where... Um, particularly for Paul, who was very religious, uh, he was well educated. He knew the um, uh, the Jewish 
sacramental system. He knew the purification rituals. He knew the temple routines. Um, and then all of a sudden, this encounter that he had on the road to Damascus flipped everything upside down. So over a span of 15 to 20 years, he had to rethink his theology, re-engage with the disciples and the apostles to, to try to understand what his religious teaching had been up until he was an adult, his conversion experience. And like, okay, now what does all that mean in light of um, this encounter with Jesus? And so Paul's doctrine of justification by faith is, is, is putting the, the, the focal point and the pinnacle of everything that the scriptures reveal is in the person of Jesus Christ. The sacrificial system is about Jesus Christ. The, um, the festivals and feasts are about Jesus Christ. The idea and the law of the Sabbath is actually about Jesus Christ. He is our true rest and peace is all in him. Um, the this this movement of people out of bondage out of Egypt through the law and into freedom uh, it's, 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 a, it's a metaphor and a, a storytelling of the work that Jesus has done for us and that salvation plan and for Paul it's this this the pinnacle of his understanding because he in himself he says I I um, it's all Jesus. Why? So that I will not boast. That's been my own effort, my own intellectual discussions, my own um, education, whatever, or my own strength. It's all of him. So for him, we are justified. In other words, we're made right with God through faith in what Jesus Christ has done, through faith in his works, through faith in his actions, through faith in that atonement, so that when Jesus says on the cross, it is finished. In other words, it's repaid the debt is paid for it's completed um, we are saved now James on the other hand it does sound like it's there's a contradiction going on here but actually it's one of the same coin you see James is talking about this regeneration through faith that affects our actions in other words that for him your faith and your actions are meant to line up. There's meant to be an alignment there. It's your faith that causes you to act differently. And and this is in, in complete contrast to a number of ways, of religious ways that people live out their lives. Religion tells you, and you can look at every religion out there, um, religion tells you uh, you need to go to a place, you need to uh, be on a pilgrimage of some sort. Um, you need to say certain prayers at certain times. Uh, and you have to do that on a regular basis at certain times as well. Um, and those are all efforts to try to weigh up the scales in your favour. Um, either t and, and, and place you in a position where the gods may have favor on you, whether it's a sacrificial system, whether it's a, um, you know, in the occult space, it's, it's uh, the, the, the cutting and, and, and offering of blood is in, is in a sacrificial system. Um, it's paying homage to satanic symbolism and signs um, that are very evident. You see it in Hollywood, you see it in the, the Grammys. They're no longer hiding it. It's all out in your face. Um, it's demonic, uh, but it's effort. It's man's effort to try to pee, uh, please or pee something. Um, that's not what James is talking about. What James is talking about is that our faith in Jesus, like Paul, has, has to do something. Um, it's not just a theoretical discussion. It's not just an abstract idea. Um, it's not just a Greek philosophical uh, engagement this personal relationship with Jesus is about regeneration it's about renewing it's about bringing a difference to us as whānau as individuals and communities and, 
and our wider hapu and iwi that we work in and live in that shows the evidence of the fruits of a faithful life and that's that's where um, the challenge for James and his believers who were persecuted and the challenge for us today in the world that we find ourselves where there are a whole lot of competing emotions, whole lot of competing ideas, whole lot of competing voices and stories that people are trying to get you into. James is saying here that your faith and your deeds need to line up. The deeds and the actions and the way we speak to people, the way we treat people, um, is a reflection of what's going on inside. It's a reflection of the generation or regeneration that's happening, or the lack of it. Um, so if you come to church on a Sunday and you worship and praise the Lord and that, and then you go and steal on the Monday, there's no regeneration going on. Um, if you raise your hands and pray and, and do certain prayers out real loud and just beautiful linguistic poetry, but you're asking Satan to help you or you're consulting a witch or a, 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 a wizard or a warlock or offering a sacrifice by your children through abortion or other things like that, uh, or you're you're happily going to support uh, sexual slavery and the trading and exploitation of of men and women and children into slavery. Um, that's not the that's not a faith faith journey. Um, this this idea, we are a people called to be something different. We're a people to be called holy, set apart. Uh, sure, we we live in a world and a society. But our actions tell the world who we are. And um, James is saying, just like at the end there, a body without a spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. What might God be asking you to do this week in your location? Is he want you to be an ambassador of reconciliation to where there's been brokenness and trauma? Is he calling you to reconcile with a brother or a sister or something of the past? Is he calling you to live a life with more integrity and honour and mana? Is it relationships? Is it with people? Is it with um, the environment? Uh, or are we still pulling people down and abusing our environment? Hmm. Things to ponder. What does faith in action look like for you? If you're around next week, um, we're going to be having a testimony service on Sunday where these types of questions were posed to our congregation. And so we're going to spend our time together just listening to the stories that our community have experienced of God working in their lives and um, God giving opportunity to uh, put faith in action um, throughout the week. So I'd love to have you with us if you're in town uh, to come and join us. Uh, please pray for us. Please pray for um, the different uh, churches and pastors and communities that are serving around New Zealand and in the Southwest Pacific. There's a lot going on. I uh, just come back from a conference last week where Josie and I were attending and hearing some awesome stories of men and women being faithful to God in their own environments and circumstances, trying to live out faith in a practical way. Hoi anō whānau, ngā mihi atu kia koutou. Uh, this is Rewai Takahu, pastor at Kaikoe Baptist Church. Um, to know God and to make him known in our community, uh, giving evidence that Jesus is alive. Our Saviour is living and he's transforming homes and people one whānau at a time. Alrighty, God bless. Hey, good night.